We got some excited people in the room tonight. And wherever you're joining us from around the world, welcome. You're in the right place. The word is directly for you tonight. We're in a new series called The DNA of Destiny. And you're getting ready to be connected, hooked up to the inheritance that God has always ordained for you. Are you excited about it? The wealth and riches that he has laid up, that's promised to us. It says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. You're getting ready to connect yourself to purpose. And prosperity is directly conjoined to finding out what you are here for, what God put you on this earth to do. You're going to be able to solve problems, meet needs. You're going to address issues. God is going to give you a calling. God is going to raise you up as a leader in your generation. We're decreeing these things over you. If you haven't noticed yet, we're speaking prophetically into the womb of your spirit, into the womb of your future. The reason you were drawn to this message is because the same message that resonates within this ministry, the message of the kingdom that Jesus was obsessed about, it's resonating within you as well. God is calling your name tonight. I want you to put your spiritual ears on because he has a word for you. We want you to hashtag as God speaks to you. We want you to tweet, Facebook, Instagram, and put hashtag destiny DNA so you can join in the conversation. Intercessors are standing by right now at cindytrimministries.org, ready to pray for you in a private chat room, and it's going to bless you indeed. Share this right now on all your social media channels. Let's get this word out. And right now, I want you to welcome with me to the platform, Dr. Cindy Trim. Yes, we are so excited to be doing life with you. And tonight, I believe, even as you gather together with your life groups, I'm here with my life group and we are experiencing the presence of the Lord and we're believing that the presence of the Lord will be the salient feature within your living room, within your car, in the park, wherever you're gathering together, in your, your church, in your synagogue, wherever you are gathering together, there the spirit of the Lord is. Let's pray our Father and our God. We give you praise and honor and glory for this day. This is the day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. I pray, Father, for the anointing that makes uh, preaching and teaching easy. I thank you, Father, because we sense your presence right now. Holy Spirit, we know that you are in the midst of us. And even as we are dealing with the concept of destiny, Father, I pray that you would Think through my mind, speak through my lips. Let there be none of me, all of you. Give me clarity in my communication. Give me the ability to articulate what's, what you have laid on your heart for this day. And even as I share, let our destinies come into alignment with your original plan and purpose. We give you praise for what we will walk away with, for the practical truth that we're, that is hidden therein in the word. And Father, for the great testimonies that we will hear and we decree and declare that already our lives are being altered, already our lives have been changed. We thank you for the breakthrough in every area in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Tonight, you're going to want to take copious notes. I believe that God is really going to bless you. You're really going to feel the anointing of God in this season. If you would just take out your Bibles with me. Um, we're going directly into the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 to 10. Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 10. And we're going to marry that with John chapter 14, verse 2 to 3. And it's very interesting, even as we begin to talk about destiny, there's not a lot of people who really understand the whole concept of destiny. And so we're going to take our time and lay a line upon line, precept upon precept. In our last teaching, we uh, uh, discovered that destiny was directly associated with the decision that we make. It's, it's associated with the choices that you make. 
and that destiny is ever changing because we are dynamic individuals. We also learn the different uh, uh, components of destiny that is not just one, but you have a financial destiny, a personal destiny, relational destiny, and it's all encompassing when it comes to destiny. But tonight we want to dig very deep and look at an individual by the name of Abraham. I love Hebrews. Hebrews is written about individuals that not only made history, but they shaped history. And, and, and I believe in our generation, we've got history makers and history shapers as well. And we cannot talk about history makers except we introduce, of course, the personality of uh, Abraham. The Bible calls him just the father of faith because that's basically who he was. And so when we talk about destiny, we have great vision and we have great great dreams and aspirations, but it's going to take a lot of faith on our part in order to quantum leap into that, that realm where God has promised to prosper us and, and, and help us to be successful. And so the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 to 10, the scripture says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. In other words, God is going to give you some instructions. And in that instructions, it, it, it's going to require obedience from you. Now, when it comes to obeying God, it's not always going to be easy and it's not always going to be convenient. And when God gives you instructions, sometimes it will inconvenience the people that are the closest to you. And it's a decision that we have to make every single day, whether we are going to obey God in his instructions or whether we are going to just uh, stick with the clutter of the common folk who, who don't understand that attached to the obedience of God is a blessing. And so God has a blessed future for you. God has a blessed destiny for you. I like that. Someone was excited about that. But God has a blessed future for you. He does not, he hasn't uh, orchestrated a future filled with curses. He has orchestrated a future filled with amazing, tremendous blessing. How many of you believe that? I believe that it is my destiny to be blessed. The Bible says that uh, he, he has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So that means that, that, that the whole spirit realm is pregnant with blessings. And I'm decreeing and declaring that this is the season that you're going to tap into those blessings. He obeyed God. And the Bible said he obeyed God and he went out not knowing whether he went. There are some instructions that God is going to give you that is going to be on a needs to know basis. It's going to take you putting one foot in front of the other. The Bible said he went not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacle with Isaac and Jacob, the ears with him, of the same promise for he looked for a city which had foundation whose builder and maker is God. And I love the fact that it says that where God led him was strange. Now this is important because we are talking about two things. We are talking about you moving through time in a terrain that you understand, but you moving in the spirit and navigating a terrain that doesn't make sense to the natural mind. And so obedience doesn't mean that you always understand what God is doing, but you trust him in the process. And most of us have to understand that we're living during a time where God is converting Christians into believers. And one of the toughest things that a pastor uh, has to do is to be able to be a part of a process that actually converts Christians into believers, where you're able to say, I believe God. Now let's braid this particular text. The scripture said that he was, he was called to go out into a place. 
John 14, chapter 2, ver, uh, or John 14, chapter 2, or John 14, verse number 2 to 3. John 14, verse number 2 to 3. The scripture says that God has a specific place for each one of us. Abraham was called to go to a place. And this scripture says that God has a place for each one of us. Let's look at this, and I'm going to read it from out of the NAS version, the New American Standard Version Bible. It says, in my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Now, in the, new, uh, in the King James Version, it says, in my father's house are many mentions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Now, this is very important. We are in a dispensation of grace. Will you not agree? This is the dispensation of grace. So dispensation tells you that it, 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 it's a process where grace will be dispensed. So that means that wherever you end up in your life, God has a grace that he wants to dispense that will keep you there, that will cause you to process, be processed there, that will cause you to progress there, that will cause you to prosper there, and that will cause you to succeed there. This dispensation of grace, I believe we are not tapping into the grace that is made available to us because we don't understand how powerful of a dispensation we are living in. Now, if God has a place for you, God has a grace for you. He has a space for you. He has a race for you. That means you've got to be able to find that place, get in that space. You've got to run your race as you access the grace. I'm decreeing and declaring that God is opening up your spirit, that he's giving you an understanding of how to access the grace for where you are right now. No matter where that place is, whether that place is spiritual, whether that place is financial, whether that space is, is, is relational, wherever you are in any space during any time of your life, sometimes God is going to lead us to a place which seems as if it is diametrically opposed to his will. But when you get there, you've got to trust God there. Now in our text, we are introduced to the history maker, Abraham, who was the firstborn of Terah. His father was named Terah. He was the heir to the best part of his father's bequeathed inheritance. Abraham's, therefore, his natural inclination would have been to love his family, to take care of his father during his golden years, and to perpetuate the family heritage. He wasn't a cold person. He was a loving person. He, was a, he had a tender heart towards people and towards his family. We know that because he often postured himself as an intercessor to intercede for his family. We see how he negotiated with God in order to save a city because his family member lived in that city. When he discovered that God was going to destroy the city, we see how he was tender even for his adult relatives where he would stand in the gap and say God you cannot destroy this city because if it's one if it's if it's just 40 righteous and 30 righteous or 20 righteous he navigated and negotiated down with God because he knew that his 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 nephew and his nephew's family would have been destroyed here is a man of tenderness here is a man that loved God but he was not a cold person but a loving person and Abraham also was a man of integrity and so God tapped
tested uh, 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 his heart and gave him a test that, that went against his nature and went against his culture and went against his tradition. tradition. And this was a test of faith. When we talk about your destiny, we are talking about you being able to understand the ways of God, to be able to understand that you too are going to be tested. You're going to be tested for your commitment to God. You're going to be tested for your love for God. You're going to be tested in the area of character. You're going to be tested in the area of integrity. And my question to you today, are you going to pass? the test. Our destinies will often take us into unknown territories where we will have to trust the leading uh, of the Spirit of God. In, in Genesis 12, if we go back to where God, uh, hallelujah, had a conversation with Abraham that changed his life. The Bible said that, that when God had, had spoken to Abraham, he had spoken to him in, uh, unto him in a way where he gave him instructions. So if you would go with me to Genesis chapter 12, uh, and if you would open your Bibles, uh, let's examine this conversation. God is heaven with him. Genesis chapter 12. The Bible said, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee thee and curse them that curse thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Now it's imperative to understand that when God speaks to you, the only person that can give you a confirmation of what God said to you is God himself. And the problem that the average Christian has is this, that they are seeking a confirmation from people that don't even converse with God on a day-to-day -day basis. And so our destinies are being altered and it's being misaligned on a day-to-day -day basis because we are conferring with the wrong folk. And it's time for you to restore your relationship back to God and begin to seek him for the instructions that he has for you. Because whoever, whoever controls the flow of information into your ear controls your destiny. You've got to be careful who you're stopping on the way towards fulfilling the original plan and purpose for God, for, for, that God has for your life. You've got to be careful who you stop to ask for direction. Because if people don't have directions for their lives, trust me, they don't have directions to give you for your life. So we've read in your hearing, Genesis chapter 12, Abraham has a destiny altering conversation with God who instructs him to, to, instructs him to leave the familiar. In, in other words, go away from what you are familiar with. Now, there is a term here uh, for this process, and the term is lach lacha. And it's easy to understand if you think of foot locker, you can think of lock locker, right? Lock locker. And it's literally translated, go find yourself or go discover a better version of yourself. It has the connotation of when he said, I want you to leave and go to a place where I'm leading you to, he was throwing him into a process which would introduce who he is to who God will one day uh, uh, make him into. In other words, he was walking to himself. When we talk about destiny, destiny is walking to yourself. And here's the caveat. Never allow who you are sabotage who you have the potential to become. 
And we love the familiar and we get over familiar with our strategies, with our life strategies, until we almost fight with God when it comes to giving up our strategy. And so sometimes God has to allow a crisis moment to get our attention, to let us know that he's referring not to your resume, but to a vision that he has for your life. Listen, your resume is not as strong as vision. And so if God is speaking to you about vision, things that he wants to do for you in the future, that means that he's going to give you an option as to whether or not you're going to be in the process that helps you to discover who you really are. And so the process lock locker is also a discovery of the hidden potential that lies dormant in you. And most of us are comfortable with who we wear and who we are, but we are not comfortable with who we possibly could be. This literally means that there, there comes a time in your life where God is going to begin to challenge you to address your life strategies. Because a lot of us want certain things, but our life strategy is diametrically opposed to it. And we can get so comfortable because of a paradigm that we have that needs to be shifted. So going to find yourself, that means every day, in every way, your life is changing daily. And, and a lot of people are um, uh, unconscious of it because they walk like, a, um, uh, uh, like um, I don't know what word I want to use. They walk like um, robots. They walk like automatrons where they're automated. But you are not an automatron. You are not a robot. Every single day, God is going to, or has, has wired you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to objectively, to deliberately, to spiritually respond to what is going on around you so that you are not a victim of circumstance and a product of your environment. That means your destiny is ever unfolding. And as you journey through life, it will take you places that literally are designed Designed to bring the best out of you. Your destiny is a place called there. At any given moment, at in any given day, it's where you end up. There is always filled with unlimited potentiality and possibility for a brighter and a greater future. While you are there, the quality of your thoughts, the strength of your spirit, your commitment to God in your soul, and the choices you make based on the options presented to you all determine the next step that you take, the next project you engage in, the next relationship you forge, and the next thing that you accomplish, you're there. God told Abraham, go to a place that I'm calling there. He said, when you get there, I'm going to let you know that you're there, but keep on moving. In other words, there's never a day where you are fully there until you die. But that means that today, this is your destiny. And then tomorrow, you make another decision because you have could have decided to take your husband or your wife out for dinner and being with your wife at dinner rather than at a Bible study would have been your destiny. Your destiny is determined by a decision that you make. And you've got to understand Understand that there is never a moment in your life that you are not presented options. That means that you have to shift your spirit into gear and there should never be a time that you lose connection with God because God wants to instruct you on a moment by moment, day by day basis to keep you in alignment, hallelujah, and on course so that you end up where you need to be now next year this time two years from this day, three years from this day, five years from this day, 20 years from this day, 30 years from this day. And listen, one minor uh, 
adjustment which might take you off course by a nano or by a, uh, a, a, a small centimeter. Hallelujah has the potential to, to have you off course by thousands of miles 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And just like an astronaut has to adjust, hallelujah, be, be, be adjust uh, the levers or whatever they're doing in the spaceship because there, there are storms and there are uh, storms that are out there in outer space that can throw them off ever so slightly, but then it can cause them to totally miss planet Earth on the return. I decree and declare you will no longer miss any opportunities that God has for you because you find yourself in the wrong place, in the wrong relationship, in the wrong space. I decree that God is altering, hallelujah, your ability right now to make the right decisions for your life. Whether you're in the midst of a crisis or in the midst of a transition or in the midst of one of your greatest challenges, I decree that you will understand that you are decision making a, a human being and God has wired you to make decisions. You don't have to feel as if you are a victim of circumstances because the life just does not make sense. Things feel like they're out of control and I've discovered that just because it feels like it's out of control with you, it doesn't mean that it's out of God's control because when things feel like it's out of control, I believe that God is in control. Your place, hallelujah, is a place. This is what we are talking about when we are talking about destiny. It's where you end up. It's where you end up emotionally. It's where you end up spiritually. It's where you end up financially. It's where you end up domestically. It's where you end up professionally as a result of a series of decisions that you made yesterday. That means that you are 100% responsible for where you are going to end up tomorrow. You no longer can blame it on a demon. You can no longer blame it on a deacon. You no longer can blame it on your demon-possessed supervisor. It is now re your responsibility. Father, hallelujah, we decree and declare that you are releasing the grace right now and that we are readjusting, hallelujah, our mindset. Father, we are trusting you, and this is a decision that we are making that no matter where we are, where we are spiritually, where we are emotionally, where we are professionally, where we are domestically, no matter where we are, we are now shifting our spirit into gear. You know the way that we take that after Father, we have been tried and, and, and through the fire, we are going to come out as pure gold. Your place called there is where you end up at any given moment and you're there is always pregnant. Time becomes your womb. Your state of mind, your emotions, and the quality of your thoughts determine what you make happen with any particular moment, in any particular circumstance, in any particular situation. I want to give you an example of this. When God placed Adam in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden was that place or called there. It there was a pleasure spot. There was no wars. There was no debt. There was no economic downturn. There was no ter terrorism. There was no bills. There was no mortgage. There was no divorce. There was no e uh, 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 abuse. There was no addiction. There was no perversion. And God placed him in the midst of this amazing place. But this place became his, his place called there. And there he made a decision to ignore a 
spiritual law, hallelujah, of God that God had put in place to bless him and that decision that he chose to ignore, hallelujah, not only altered his destiny, but it altered the destiny of the entire human race. The world shifted. We shifted dispensationally. It, that, that one act, that one decision, that one choice that he made took us from the dispensation of innocence into the dispensation of consciousness. In other words, one simple act had the ability to change uh, humanity's operating system. In other words, we call that the butterfly effect. In other words, everything that you do, everything that you say is not only affecting your destiny, it's affecting the destiny of all humanity. This is why you've got to be conscious as a Christian because God wants you to affect positive change. You are the light of the world. You are a city set on the hill that cannot be hid and it is your destiny to be a leader. God said it is your destiny to be the head and not the tail, to be first and not last, but you get to choose whether you are the head or the tail, whether you are first or last, because God has made you a free moral agent. He has made you a destiny making uh, machine. He has given you the ability to make decisions. That decision, hallelujah, when Adam was in his place, altered humanity's operating system and how we operate as human beings was altered permanently. But thanks be to God for the second Adam where scripture said that I came to seek and to save that which was lost, not who which was lost. Because he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. But he came to restore what we lost through Adam in the garden of Eden. And today, likewise, we find ourselves in a variety of circumstances that alters our lives, that changes our destiny. But I want to tell you, you don't have to sit up with regret. You don't have to look back and say, I should have did this and I could have done that. You cannot go back to the, the beginning to begin again. But what you can do now, you could start now to have a new ending. I'm decreeing and declaring that no matter how this year started with you, I decree you're going to end this year strong. Something good is about to happen to you. Your destiny is about to be altered. Uh, reading through the Bible, I discovered how destiny is actually formed. And we all know the story of Joseph. He was born into a family of 12 and he suffered at the hands of his brothers who were jealous of the favor given to him by God and their father. He was thrown in a pit and then he was taken to Egypt and he found more favor with his new boss but he rises to a place of prominence and influence as CEO over the entire conglomerate that, that his boss had set up but his boss, his wife accused him of attempted rape which landed him in Potiphar's prison. This is the place where his life changed because he could have been bitter. He could have talked about what his family did not do. He could have talked about what his father never saved him from. He could have talked about his demon possessor's boss wife. He could have talk talked about how nobody was with him but when he found himself in that place called there. That place called there changed his destiny because it was in part of first prison. This place became the place of supernatural promotion for him because in all of this, he maintained his credibility. He maintained his integrity and he never allowed what people would do were doing to him, make him lose his cool. He never allowed them to determine his destiny. He stood up right before God.
God and he sought God. Hallelujah. And God helped him that in the midst of the most adverse circumstances, he was honing his skill. He was refining his gift. He was refining his character. So people thought of him as being an overnight success, but he had to go to sleep many nights without the support of family. He had to go to sleep many nights with a reputation that didn't belong to him. He had to go to sleep with satanic stigmatization that was placed upon him, but he trusted God and his meteoric rise to the to, uh, to power is nothing short of divine. God took him from the prison to the prime to being a prime minister, and it happened overnight. Some of you are going through, you're going through in your family, you are going through in the workplace, and it seems as if people have got you wrong. Have you ever been in a relationship with where people got you wrong? They called you arrogant when you weren't. They called you stingy when you weren't. They called you by name, but you are in a place in God where God is testing your character. He's testing your perseverance. You've got to be like Job. In all of this, he did not accuse God falsely. He said, though they slay me, yet will I trust in you. Have you ever had an experience that didn't make any kind of sense? And there's a lot of people that are giving up. They are giving up on God. They are giving up on their destiny. They are giving up on their future. But I decree and declare that no matter what you are going through, you are going to stand in the midst and say, I trust you. You, God, I don't know why this is happening to me, but I will not accuse you and I will not do anything stupid. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to turn my back. Let them do what they want. Let them say what they want because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm going to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as I know, hallelujah, my labor is not in vain. Every moment, in every way, every day, your destiny is being formed as God takes you through the process. Lach, laka. Go to yourself. Find out what you're really made of. Find out what you're really made of. You're more than a conqueror. But how would you know that you're more than a conqueror if you never had to conquer anything? If you never had to battle anything? And there were so many people that are battling. They're battling all kinds of hardship. I can imagine Joseph with no one that was familiar in an unfamiliar territory. I can imagine the nights and the days. But what he did during those lonely moments was to prepare himself for the inevitable success in the future. Genesis 50 verse 14 to 22 says this, and Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brother, brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father, when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will pre-adventure hate us. You see, people always want to project onto you what is in their heart. So they're fearful of Joseph, not because of Joseph, but because of the hidden iniquity in their own heart. Don't fight fire with fire. Be like David. Find your place in worship. Had David thrown the javelin after Saul threw the javelin at him, he would have become. Had, had David thrown the javelin that Saul threw at him, 
he would have become just like Saul. But he found a place of solace in worship. You see, your worship is your greatest testimony. We're not talking about what you do be behind the four walls of a church. That's convenient. And you understand that your work is your worship. And that whatever you do, you're not doing it for your boss. You're not doing it for your supervisor. You're doing it as unto God. Verse number 16, Genesis 50, verse 16, he said, they send a messenger unto Joseph saying, thy father did commend before he died saying, so shall you say to Joseph, forgive I pray thee now and trust the trespass of thy brother and their sin for they did, they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy servants of God, of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we be thy servant. Joseph's dream finally comes to pass. Everything that you're going through is because your dream is going to come to pass. And God is testing you. Lock, lock up. Through this test, go discover who you really are. Find out the stuff that you're made of. You're not as weak as you think. You're stronger than you think. You're more powerful than you think. You're more strategic than you can ever imagine. But you wouldn't know until God takes you to that place. Joseph said unto them, fear not, for I am in the place of God. I'm in the place. This is my destiny. One day, you're going to be able to send a thank you note to everyone that hurt you, everyone that sabotaged you, everyone that undermined you. And you're going to say thank you. I didn't know that what you were doing was a part of the process. I feel the anointing of God. And some of you are getting delivered because you couldn't forgive people. You know, people ask me about growing up in a single parent home with my father. My father had seven of us. There were seven of us. And at the end of the seven child, left my mother, remarried, and had two more children and forgot that we existed. So people ask me about that. I just tell them, you don't miss what you never had. And every single day, I'm grateful. I'm grateful because in his absence, I discovered how strong I was and how intelligent I was. Because at eight, I started my own business. At 12, I was financially responsible for myself. And I've been paying my bills since I was eight years old. So you know at this age now that I'm 21, a bill doesn't frighten me, honey. It only brings, listen, it, it only brings the billionaire out of me. I can look back without regret. I don't cry about my past. There's nothing to cry for. Why? Because I'm in a place in God. I'm able to stand here and give you principles. I'm able to talk to the world and give the world principles. I'm able to be on a telephone conversation today with Oxford University. I'm able to advise. Why? Because I understand kingdom principle. The kingdom principle of economics. The kingdom principle of business. The kingdom principle of success. The kingdom principle of prosperity. And I can look back at my lock locker process and then, then just thank God for an absent father. He was missing in action for a reason. So you can dump me anywhere in this world and you can take everything from me because I know what it's like to grow up with nothing. But give me one year. Like Whitney said, give me one moment in time. 
Each one of us have our stories. But the narrative of your past doesn't have to become the story of your future. You can take your life off of stutter. So many of us have a cycle where God is giving us an opportunity. And we hear it. And I'm grateful to be able to do life with you. Because my assignment is to get you from here to there. And boy, am I excited about it because we got some millionaires here today. Here today. We've got some history makers here today. We've got some line crossers here today. We've got some entrepreneurs here today. We've got some industry leaders here today. We've got some innovators here today. We've got some people that are the head and not the tail here today. Lock, lock, a go discover who you really are. Stop blaming everything on the devil. No matter what you are going through, you got to find your place in God. And each one of us have to journey. And we have to be able to say, though, my outward man perish, yet day by day, my spirit man is being renewed. It's not where you end up in the natural. It's where you end up in the spiritual. You see, the realms that we want, the realms of power, the realms of influence, the realms of prosperity, the realms of success is spiritual. You can have a title but no influence. This is what happened with David. This is what uh, Saul had the title, David had the power. This is what happened with, 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 with um, uh, Esther and Nebuchadnezzar. He had the title, but she had the power. And so just because you don't have the title doesn't mean that you don't have the power. This is what happened with Daniel and, and Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel had the power. Nothing moved in Babylon unless his footprint or thumbprint was on it. And it, it didn't matter what they were doing through legislation. He could go up in the realm of the spirit and overrule it and override it. And they didn't even know what hit him. This is the place that God wants us to be. Some of us have the tendency to undermine our greatness and our future destiny because we don't understand the ways of God. Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways, your, your ways, my ways, says the Lord. We've got to understand that there's a way that seemed right unto man, but the end thereof is death, the end thereof is judgment. So that word way, another word for way is the word strategy. So my strategies are not your strategies. God said through Jesus Christ, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So that means that once you have that revelation, your days of struggling is over. I'm in the place, I'm in the place of God. I'm in the place. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be as well. Where's that place? It's a place of dominion. It's a place of power. Where the elements of this earth no longer have control over you, but you have control over it. Let's bring this to... Um, a comfortable place where we can stop. Let's go back to Genesis. We'll talk a little bit more about this. In our text, we see God testing Abraham. From this point, that point, straight through to Genesis 18. So if you want to see what his lock laka, his process is that gets him to that place in God, you can read Genesis chapter 12 to Genesis chapter 18, and you can see every area where he was tested. God told him, this test is going to require you to leave 
something and someone. The question is, is your destiny important enough for you to leave where you are? Scripture said, leave your country, leave your family, leave your father's house. Your country, your family, your father's house. Your country, your family, your father's house. What does that mean? Your country has to do with systems and environments and customs and language and cultures and tradi traditions and laws and mores and opportunity. This is important. You've got this opportunity, but sometimes you walk away from a good opportunity to a great opportunity, from, from a good opportunity to a better. When I left Bermuda, I was born in Bermuda, and when I left Bermuda, I didn't leave and come to the United States of America for a better life. I had a better life. I was running the country. I had money, I had status, I had influence. Uh, I, I, I was well connected around the world, around the world with other movers and shakers and history makers. I had uh, uh, tea with the Queen of England, um, uh, celebrated. Uh, one of her son's birthdays with him. Uh, you know, I, I dined with the sister. So, so I knew all the who's who in the United States of America back then, went to breakfasts, dinners. So I was well connected. But when God said to me, I want you to walk away from what I've given you. In other words, I, I, I've given you the desires of your heart. Walk away from it. Everybody thought I was crazy. But I discovered something. I would, have been, I would have been influential in my country, but not influential in the world. I would have been popular in my country, but not popular. So God had a, a bigger stage for me. So walk away. Walk away from what you know is familiar. The things that are working for you. Walk away from the opportunities. Turn your back on it. And it's not as, it's easier said than done. Because sometimes God will have you walk away from something that is actually working. Walk away from something that is actually causing you to be successful. Walk away from that. And that's hard. Now those of you that are married, uh, keep your boot. God ain't telling you lead it. He ain't saved. You weren't saved when... <laughs> Don't go home and say, God just spoke to me through Dr. Trim. <laughs> I got a better opportunity. Deacon Spaghetti, he looks better than you. He speaks in tongues and he prays. No, that ain't God. That's the devil. Turn to your neighbor and say, shut it down. I'm a covenant woman. If I ever caught covenant with you, I will never walk away from you. You can walk away from me, but I'm going with you. You'll get that tomorrow. Because I'm a covenant woman. I, I, I don't abandon covenantal contracts. So if, if you have a crazy moment where you're gone and then you come back, I'm right here. I never went anywhere. I'm good. You crazy. I'm in my right mind. But God said, I want you to leave. And this is going to be important because we are kingdom people. And I probably leave a cliffhanger. Leave your country. Leave the systems, environments, customs, language, cultures, tradition, laws, mores, and opportunities. When I left Bermuda, I left success influence, power, and I came to the United States of America that had different cultures, and I came here legally, that had different cultures. <laughs> I didn't sneak across the border. I came on Delta Airlines. <laughs> Why did he say countries? Because this molded his existing paradigm. And where God was going to take him into a position of power, God had to give him a new paradigm. We don't know how powerful 
Babylon is until we get saved. Because Babylon is not going to let you go. You want to go, but Babylon ain't going to let you go. Because Babylon wants the best and the brightest. And I'm going to show you what Babylon has done to the church. Leave your country. Leave your family. This is your social system, your support system, your heritage that's coming from you, your immediate and extended family. I was the only one living in the United States of America. No family. No, no establish anything. Lach laka. Go find yourself. You've got greater potential. You've got books inside of you. Businesses inside of you. You've got ministry inside of you. You've got companies inside of you. You've got foundations inside of you. Go find out what your potential is. You've got a, you've got a CEO inside of you. You've got an innovator inside of you. You've got a billionaire inside of you. Go discover everything that you are. And you're going to be tested every way. And you can always go back. I can always go back. Because there were times that were rough and tough. And I kept getting, if you don't want to stay there, we have a job for you. I fired my job and I went to work for God. He said, leave your family, leave your support system, leave your identity, people that know you, people that have your DNA. And then leave your father's house. That's your inheritance. That's something that's guaranteed. And then I, I want to, to, you to, to go to a land that I'm going to show you. In other words, walk to yourself. Leave from where you are and discover who you really are. Discover my original plan and purpose for your life. Don't let culture define it. Don't let your family decide, define it. Don't let your environment define it. Don't let your neighborhood, don't let your past, don't let your community, don't let your resume define it. Get rid of your resume. Get to a vision. God said, if you do that, I will bless you. You know what that means? I'm going to alter the very strata that you're living in. Glory to God. God said to Abraham, I just want you to leave the structures that created your current paradigm. Because I'm going to give you a new paradigm. Move away from the familiar. Move away from the usual. Move away from the normal. Move away from the standard. Move away from what's typical. Move away from what's common. Move away from what's customary. Move away from what's habitual. Move away from what's everyday. Move away from what's regular. Move away from what's routine. Move away from the ordinary. Move away from the average. Move away from the normal. Move away from the run of the mill, the standard, the typical, the middle of the road, the conventional. Move away from the unremarkable. Move away from stuff that lacks luster. Move away from the, 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 the life where you have nothing to write home about. Move away from the plan. Move away from the mundane. Move away from the humdrum. Move away from the colorless. Move away from the commonplace. And I'm going to take you to a land that is opposite. I'm going to take you from to, to a dimension that is opposite. You are going to live in the realm of the extraordinary. You are going to live in the realm of the exceptional. You are going to live in the realm of the remarkable. You are going to live in the realm of the extraordinary. You are going to live in the realm of the unexpected. You are going to live in the realm of the surprising. Every day you're going to have a surprise. You are going to live in the realm of of the out of the ordinary. You are going to live in a realm of the extraordinary. You are going to live in the realm of the exciting. You are going to live in a realm that is memorial. You are going to live in the realm that is noteworthy. But you got to leave. And the decision is yours. Get the out of the country. The structures that created 
your paradigm through socialization, culturalization, education, and, 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 and through uh, relational constellations. And from your kindred, move away from your relational constellation and your environment and your father's house. Move away from the spirit of inheritance, what you inherited from your family. It's interesting. All of this has to be severed. All of us like the familiar, and we like to go back. But there ain't no going back. Go to a land that I'm going to show you. In other words, God was saying, I'm going to take you into a new spiritual, social, economic, and spiritual realm. A new level or a new class to which people are assigned according to their social status, their education and income. In other words, I'm gonna change your social status. I'm gonna change your education. I'm gonna change your income. In other words, he was inviting him first to make the mental journey before it was manifested in his life. Second Corinthians 10, three to six. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, this is what it's simply saying is this. If you notice that when we go into spiritual warfare, we don't ever look at this text for its stratification. So if you look at a rock, a rock has stratification. So when you blow up one section of the rock, you got another strata. Then you blow up another section, it's like a big mountain, then you, it, there's another strata. So mentally, through socialization, through your family dynamics, through your education, all of these things, it contributed to your current paradigm. And this journey was one that would give him a paradigm shift. That means that he would be tested and one stratification of his paradigm would be eliminated. Then he would be tested again and another stratification would be eliminated until the whole structure collapsed and he had a completely new paradigm. The stratifications, pulling down strongholds, boom. Next stratification, casting down imagination, boom. The next stratification, every high thing that lifts itself against the knowledge of God, boom. The next stratification, your thought life, bring into captivity your thought life, boom. There's the four stratifications, and you're going to be tested in every area. When God told Abraham to leave the familiar, he was referring to the multi-layered cultural mental, economic, psychological, social, spiritual structures that were called paradigm within his mind that was erected by virtue of the fact that he had become a product of his environment. And God wanted to change his mental model. The message of the kingdom drives transformational change that starts at the level this of the mind let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your mental your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world because the world will mold and shape your mental paradigm until you're totally misaligned with the plans and purposes of God. And you end up in a place that you say, where am I? This is not what I had in mind. I didn't think that at 50 I'll be here. I didn't think at 60 I'll be here. And there are so many people look back in their life 
And they say, if only I had made better decisions. But thank God you don't have to live with regret because the years that the canker worm, palmer worm, caterpillar destroyed, he's going to restore those years. So today I decree your destiny is coming back into alignment with God's original plan and purpose for your life. And that today is a defining moment because today is a day that you, begin, you, you get to begin again. Your life is going to be put on reset. And tomorrow about this time, things are going to begin to change for you. And they're going to change for the best. They're going to change for the best. You got some decisions that you've got to make. Destiny is not a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. It's attached to the decisions that you make. And this is your destiny now, listening to me. Why? Because you made a decision. You could have went to a movie. You could have been eating chicken wings at Wingstop. And that would have been your destiny. But today you decided to hang out with us in the Four Point Broadcast because we're teaching you that changing your destiny doesn't require a miracle. It just requires a decision. And if you don't like where you are today, your one decision from being somewhere else is as simple as that. In Jesus' name, let's pray. How many of you would say, Dr. Shrim, I was really challenged today, and I'm beginning to get an understanding of what destiny is all about. It's starting to make sense. Our Father and our God, we thank you for each individual that is listening to this teaching. We thank you, Father, for strategy that you will bring us and give us, and that you would give us a greater understanding of the ways of God that you would teach us like you taught Abraham, like you taught Joseph. Many of the other biographies that we have read and that we have admired, I pray, Father, that this moment will change our destiny. Teach us how to listen to you and hear you. Let us not be victims of circumstance. Let us not play the victim card or blame game and projecting our own insecurities onto others. But let us just stop and say, it is what it is. It ain't where it ain't. I'm here because of decisions that I made. Give us a vision of where we can be. And then, Father, give us an opportunity and give us the courage to find ourselves, to go to ourselves, and to discover the great potential that you have hidden inside of us. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's welcome back Pastor Ryan. Amen. What a powerful word, the power of a decision. Dr. Trim often says you're one decision away from living the life of your dreams. You know, who you were connected to last season got you to where you are, but they may or may not be the same connections that you need to get you to where you're going. And I know that you heard a sound coming from this platform tonight, and it's a connection you need to make to get you to that next dimension of faith, that next dimension of influence, and that's why we're encouraging you tonight to make the decision to partner with Cindy Trim Ministries. Amen. Got some partners in the room. By sowing a seed every single month, you're connecting your faith with ours. And the anointing and the mantle that is upon this ministry is released into your life. So hit that give button right now and become a partner today, whether it's $25 a month or $1,000 a month. Every seed that you deposit into this ministry goes right into the work of reaching those who are lost. 
and bringing hope to the hopeless around the world. We're adopting cities every single day. We're reaching out through outreach ministries and of course, making this broadcast possible to reach you every other week right there in your living room, in your car, wherever you are. Partner today and reach out in person by attending one of our events. We've got several. You can look on our website. We've got Kingdom School of Ministry every July, and we've got Injure Your Strong every December. Both of those events, you wanna make sure to be there to connect with us in person. God bless you.